anybody can do the four cuts, putting the four in one in three degrees of external rotation. It's not a very difficult task, but there are certain concepts that uh, would be best understood and uh, things can change uh, what we call as functional alignment today. So you can change things a wee bit if you know these four concepts. So the first concept is the PCO. So what we are trying to do is basically we are resecting bone anteriorly and posteriorly. We are recreating this gap with the implant. So there is that much of implant behind the posterior femoral cortex as was resected and that much of implant anteriorly as much as the bone was resected. So that's a posterior condylar offset. You might in some cases uh, just take very little bone off the posterior condyle. So the posterior cut might be very wafer thin and then fill it with an implant basically which is uh, more in width than what bone has been taken away and that increases the posterior bit uh, of the gap. And if you, as all of you know, basically, if you increase the posterior bit of the gap, the flexion gap becomes tight, and the flexion gap becomes tight, then you have tight posterior structures. You might end up with a flexion contracture. Sometimes it's useful in an FFD knee, <coughs> in, a, in a knee with a fixed flexion deformity. In any case, when you start releasing, and you have to be very careful in releasing, you might just jack open the uh, flexion gap. And to fill in this flexion gap and not the extension gap, you can then increase the posterior offset. So as I said, basically, if you increase the posterior offset, you're simply filling up the uh, flexion gap. And so it does come handy in some cases, but rarely. On the other hand, if you take too much of uh, posterior bone of the femoral condyle, uh, you will not be able to fill that gap. So you'll have a reduced uh, PCO. And this is quite a common situation in which you end up with an increased flexion gap compared to the extension gap, something known as flexion instability. So be wary of how much you take off uh, the posterior condyle. The other concept I want to introduce basically is of referencing. As all of us know basically, uh, most of us in India use uh, the posterior referencing uh, devices. So what is referencing? Basically, you are referencing, you are getting one bit right. That means that now we are looking at the sagittal plane. You are getting the anterior uh, cut completely right, flush with the anterior femoral cortex, and then you are accommodating the posterior bit. That's anterior referencing. If you get the posterior bit right, as we do, we put our uh, jigs uh, posteriorly referenced, and then we have the stylus which is hanging anteriorly. So we get the posterior bit right, but the anterior bit basically could be variable. So that's, that's what we normally use in India, a posterior referencing device. So you can end up either too high anteriorly, that is stuffing the petalofemoral joint, or you could end up too low, that is notching the cortex, anterior femoral cortex. And when, when does this matter? When you are in between sizes. So as I said, anybody, anybody and everybody could just put a four in one and cut. The implant guy will come and do that for you, but where do we come in uh, is when such situations come in, when you're between sizes. Now, when you're between sizes and you're posteriorly referencing, as I said, you might notch if you, the, the, the dictum as was taught uh, over years was to downsize if you're between sizes. And if you're downsizing, you might anteriorly notch. Now, of course, there are certain new concepts, basically, as uh, through the day you would learn. Uh, kinematic alignment, functional alignments in which you can flex that femur a wee bit to accommodate that notching. So you won't notch if you flex this femur in a downsized implant. But one has to be aware of referencing and its implications. So that's the kind of notching that you can avoid if you either basically upsize the implant, but you know the downside is basically that you'll take less of posterior femoral condyle or else you can just flex this implant a wee bit and you can get it off that anterior femoral cortex. The third concept, um, as in the first talk, we, 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 we had a similar slide, external rotation. So when do you know from your four femoral cuts that you've got adequate external rotation? Three degrees is what we normally put in. We can you know, escalate it to about five degrees, but not more than five degrees. That's how we know, basically, when you have a piano sort of shaped of anterior femoral cut. So piano being that number one is the lateral side, number two being medial. So you have a elongated lateral side of the anterior femoral cut and a uh, lesser uh, cut on the medial side. You also have a thicker medial femoral condyle compared to the lateral. And that's how you're externally rotating because you're 
uh, rotate that jig, that four in one, basically higher up medially. So that's the end result of uh, gap balancing, basically in uh, um, in either of uh, the philosophies is a rectangular gap. Of course, a rectangular gap in uh, and that's a correct rotation. That's how you know that your rotation is correct. Uh, of course, these gaps could be you know following the mechanical axis. Uh, theory or the kinematic alignment that again basically through the day we learn but do not internally rotate beyond a certain point because you you will develop lateral instability in flexion you might have I mean the same knee when you extend will be slightly valgus and you'll have these petalofemoral problems as shown in this diagram so laterally you'll have a lot of petalofemoral contact pressures lastly flexion and extension of the femoral component as I said basically Flexion is now acceptable. It wasn't acceptable uh, previously. Flexion is acceptable if you want to avoid notching, especially when you are between sizes. So the correct placement, basically, again, these are the four concepts that you must keep in mind. Uh, you must be aware at all times, especially when you are between sizes, or else, basically, you're not getting these gaps equal. There is something going wrong, and you must be aware of this, and this would sort things out. Thank you very much.